Hi everyone, in today's video, we'll be taking a look at toggle switches and how we can create a simple content switcher in WordPress. We'll be using some code snippets and it will work in Elementor, in Bricks, or any page builder of your choice. Let's go ahead and see some examples. Here are a few examples of toggle switches that you may come across. The first one is a dark mode switcher and that just switches the dark mode on or off. Then you have another kind of toggle switch. This is one that is the most common one. And that just switches something on or off. So you can switch like your reduce motion. You say I want to switch reduce motion on or off. Or I want to switch this badge on or off. So that's another kind of switcher. And then the third type of switcher that we know is a content switcher. And that basically toggles the content from one type of content to the other, something like monthly to yearly or things like that. And when we click on it, it switches the entire content from, you see, monthly to yearly. So this is the monthly and this is the yearly price. As with most things in web design, there are a number of ways to create toggle switches. And I would like you to ask yourself some questions to guide you through which method you'd want to take. So the first question is, how many logical properties are you going to switch between? So are you switching just one thing on or off? Or are you switching between two things? Or are you switching between multiple things? That can give you an idea of which method to take. If you're only concerned with one thing, that is you're switching one thing on or off, like your dark mode, you're switching the dark mode on or off, or things like reduce motion, a toggle to switch reduce motion on or off, or your play button to switch it on or off, then you might want to consider using the toggle switch pattern. So that can be done in one of two ways. You can either use the checkbox or you use a button with some area information attached to it. I'll leave a link to it in the description. On the other hand, if you are switching between two completely different things, that is not just an on and off kind of situation, then you might want to consider the toggle switch pattern, which I'll show now, and that uses radio buttons. So I'll say, if the radio button is A, then show A. If the radio button is B, then show B. So that is the second pattern. On the other hand, if you have more than two things that you want to toggle between, then I'll just say, use a tab pattern for that. There are tabs are good enough to toggle between three things because it will get a bit more complicated if you try to do something else. So just stick with the tab pattern if it is more than two items. So in this video, I'm just going to show you how to do the toggle switch pattern, which switches between two things. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and do a keyboard test with what we have currently and a screen reader test to see how everything should look and sound like. So now let's jump back in. So for the first one, you can see when I click on it, it has the focus outline and you see some action going on. Then if I use the keyboard, so if I tap to it, so tab key, you see it has the focus outline as well. When I press the space bar, it toggles between the both states. One other important thing you need to remember is that you cannot toggle both the states and the visible text. Make sure if you are toggling the, the name, that is the label or the visible text or the area label, then make sure you're not toggling the states, which is like the area checked or area pressed or something like that. Because if you toggle both of them at the same time, then it will cause some problems for screen readers. So usually you toggle either the states or the visible text. Don't toggle both of them together. So this is for the first one. If I tab to the next thing, you can see we have the focus outline on the toggle switch. And when I press the space bar, it toggles it on and off. And you can see all of the animation, everything is there. Then we can come down to the last switch. Same thing, space bar, on or off. You can also use the arrow keys as well to do on or off. And everything works with the keyboard. We'll also do a screen reader test now to see how it might sound to a screen reader user. 
So I'll turn on NVDA. NVDA is free for Windows. You can go ahead and download it. If you're a Mac user, then you have VoiceOver, which is free and comes as default with all MacBooks. So now I'll turn on NVDA. Taskbar. Toggle buttons. Okay. Different con just toolbar. Different con toggle buttons. Banner landmark navigation landmark. Main landmark different content switchers heading level one. So if I press the tab key, it will now go to the focusable element now. So that's toggle dark mode switch off. So you see, toggle dark mode it told me the switch is off. That means the dark mode has been switched off. If I press the space bar, on. It tells me it's on. So that means I've turned on the dark mode. So that's one thing you can listen to. Next one oh, is the try any of the try. So if I see if I tap in try any of the snippets below grouping add sale badge switch off. So because I'm using semantic elements, it's read out the name of the grouping, which is the label for all of the different switches. It also read out the name of the individual switch itself, which says add sale badge. And then told me it is off. The moment I press spacebar, on. It tells me it's on. You can listen to it again if I press the shift tab. Buy now link. And then press the tab key again. Try any of the snippets below grouping add sale badge switch on. So you see, it tells me the entire label. It reads everything to me. And I can now press the space bar. Off. On. On or off. Off. And that's it for Edit this clone feature. export. Edit clone export sync to clone. And the reason for that is because this is a simple toggle on or off. But in the terms of the content toggle, we are toggling content. So we are saying monthly to yearly. It's not just an on-off situation. It is more of a more informative way than for that one, we use radio buttons, not checkboxes or buttons. So watch what happens when I come here. Main landmark. So try any of the snippets below grouping view add code snippet screenshot link. Okay, then select your billing cycle grouping. Monthly radio button checked one of two. It says monthly radio button. Let me go ahead and press the space bar. Yearly radio button checked two of two. It says yearly radio button checked two of two. So it tells me if I press the space bar again. Monthly radio button checked one of two. And because your radio buttons, that means the arrow keys should work as well. So if I press the down arrow or the right arrow. Yearly radio button checked two of two. Monthly radio button checked one of two. See, that's how all of them work. They give you exit every information that you need from the radio button. It works with keyboard, it works with a screen reader, and it works with the mouse. So those are all of the things. Let me go back to the light mode. And yeah, that's it. So now let's go ahead and see how we can easily just put the code and we get our content switcher. So I'll jump into two different builders. First, I'll try it out with Elemental, then I'll use it in Bricks. So to show you that it works in any builder of your choice. So now let's jump right into Elemental. So here we are in the Elemental editor. The two things we need are a HTML widget and the two items that we want to toggle between. So it could be two containers, it could be two widgets or anything. And then all we have to do is drop in the code into the HTML widget and we'll add some ID and class names to the two widgets that we want to toggle between. So let's go ahead. I'll drop in a container. Then I'll drop in the HTML widget. So HTML. Then I'll go ahead and paste in my HTML. Don't worry, the code will be in the description so you can go ahead and edit it. So we have the code. Finally, I'll drop in my two widgets. So I'll say maybe two pricing widgets. One, and then I'll just duplicate it to, maybe I'll make it a bit smaller. This is not needed, but I'm just going to use it for demonstration purposes only. And then just copy. Paste the style. So we have two. Then let me make it all in the center, center, so that they're all lined up properly. Now 
I can go ahead and, so that we know that it's working, let me go ahead and change this to yearly pricing. So yearly. And the other one, or that will be monthly pricing. And the other one will be yearly pricing. So yearly pricing. And uh, I'll give it a price of maybe point nine nine. Okay. So that's we have two different pricing. So let me save that. The last thing we need to do is add some class names and some IDs. So for the first one, we'll go to the advanced tab and we'll give it a class name and an ID. The class name is going to be DD content section. Then for the first one, I'll say it is active. So like two things. So DD content section, then active. For the second one, it will only be just DD content section. So classes DD dash content dash section. Immediately it hides. Then all we need to do is now give it some IDs. So for the first one, I'll give it an ID of DD dash item one dash content. And for the second one, let me pull up the navigator. Go to the second one. To open up the navigator using your keyboard, you just press Control and I. So I'm going to the second one, advanced tab, and this one, the CSS ID is DD item two dash content. So DD dash item two dash content, and that's it. Publish it. And now if you preview on the front end, see monthly pricing, if I tap through, yearly pricing. And that's how simple it is. We get our toggle switch and everything here is customizable. So let's go back to the code. We'll go to the HTML and we can now change all of the code. So basically the things at the beginning are the things that we change. So let me just zoom in a little bit and try to expand this. So the things we need to change here are, let me close it. So you see, select your billing cycle. That is easier, select your billing cycle. That is the legend. The legend is basically the heading and one nice thing about using this field set and legend is that you can actually put your heading tags. So you can actually write this as a H2 or H3 within that legend. It's allowed. So slash H3. And that is allowed. But first, let me make sure this is gone. So you can do that if you want. But let me not do that. Then the other things there are you can change the label so we're changing the legend and then the labels you see here it says monthly you can see that to be maybe we leave that as monthly and the other one rather than yearly you can see annually so that one is here we see yearly you can now write annually and that should update automatically because it is the label that is being read out so every of the different area whatever information is on the inputs. The label is just giving the inputs their name, but everything that has to give the name, role, and state of the input is on the input itself. So that's it. Those are the things that we need to change. Like I said, you can change the billing cycle, you can change the monthly, and then the annually. And finally, we have your CSS classes. This is where you define all of the different parameters for the class, so you can change the height, of the toggle switch, you can change the width. If you want the width to be bigger, so say something like six rem, make it longer, or don't leave a four rem. You can use it in pixels, you can do however you want it. So all of this is what controls everything that you see here. These are all of the colors. I just used my own CSS variable colors to style everything. And that's it. All simple and easy to do. Let me publish it and you can go to the front end and see if I use the keyboard and I press the tab key, we get our focus outline. If I press spacebar, it works. The arrow keys, 
they work. The same principle applies when working with Bricks Builder. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here we are in Bricks Builder. First, let me go ahead and drop in a section which comes with the container. Then what we need to do is now drop in a code element. Then we'll drop in the two elements that we want to toggle between. So I'll drop in a code element. So code. And I'll drop in a block. Maybe two blocks. And then within these two blocks is where the elements will reside. So let me drop in some elements. So maybe a pricing widget. And I'll duplicate that. Put that in the next block. Then within the code element is where we'll drop in our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let me go ahead and make this container to be a column. Okay, so we have everything. So for the code, first I'll drop in all of the code. Paste it in there. Then the nice thing with Bricks is that you can now separate your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I'll copy the JavaScript and paste it within the JavaScript area without the script tags. So delete the script tag, go to the top, and delete the script tag as well as the style tag. Then I'll copy all of the CSS. Cut that, delete the style tag, and paste it within the CSS area. So we have the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript. Next, we want to make sure that everything is being loaded. So I'll say execute code. Then we don't really have any dynamic data, so we don't need to pass any dynamic data. And let's say I want to render without wrapper. Then I will sign the code. And we have our toggle switch at the top. Next thing we need to do is now put the class name and the ID. So I'll come to the block, I'll go under the style tab, and I'll give it a class name of DD content dash section. Since this is the first one, I'll give it another class name just with a space and say active. Then for the second one, it's the same class name, so DD content dash section. That goes away. And now we just need to give them their ID. So this, this is the second block. So I'll say DD item two content. The other one is DD dash item one dash content. And basically that's it. So let me just make sure I change some of the parameters. So we know, so for the yearly one, I'll go to the content tab. Then let me just give it something else. Say maybe the price is $2.99 and save that. Because it's hidden, that's why you can't see it now. But if you want to style it, you might as well first remove the class names, then do your styling, then put the class name back, the DD content section. So once we have this, I can now go ahead and preview it on the front end. So go to the front end. And you see, we can toggle this on and off. Let me go ahead and center it. So I'll come back to this container, make sure everything is centered. So center, center, so that everything is centered, save. Then let me go back, refresh, and we get the item. So toggle between monthly and yearly. If you look at the code, let's go ahead and inspect it. We are using field set legend and the input we are using is the type of radio because we are toggling between two separate or distinct items. If it's just one item that we are toggling on or off, we can just use a button we give with an area pressed and roll equal to switch or we can use the input type equal to checkbox, roll equal to switch and then we can just toggle it on and off. So that will be toggling on, off. But using on, off does not provide enough information 
that we are switching between yearly to monthly. So that's why we're using the radio button here. And if you are a Bricks Extras user, I believe they already have one toggle switch that is built into Bricks Extras. And I believe they are also using the same pattern of radio buttons. I haven't tested it, but I know that David, he is into accessibility a lot as well. He doesn't say so much in the groups, but I know he cares about accessibility and most of his elements tend to be accessible. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to learn more about any of these things, please do let me know in the comment section and I'll try to go over them in more details and I'll try to leave them in the description where you can find out more resources to study about all of these items. So until next time, keep designing and keep caring about accessibility. Bye.